I, you know, I'm trained as a clinician, as a surgeon, and I realized more and more during my training that the more complicated the problem was, the bigger the intervention was and less the return, the outcome, the favorable outcome, the chance of favorable outcome. And so I became more and more interested in seeing research, clinical interventions more as a way to have our hands on a problem, but at the same time try it from there to understand the problem better because that's the only way we're ever going to treat uh, big and complex diseases like cancer, cardiovascular diseases, and so forth. So I became interested in translational medicine to start with whatever that means, clinically relevant research, um, for two reasons. One, to understand be how better uh, how to uh, facilitate the process of testing new ideas in the patients, but also the other component, which is how we approach uh, uh, the discovery of uh, related to the uh, to specific diseases in patients by starting from where they are, where they were from the patients. And I realized more and more that there was a big dissociation in research between the elegant research that provides new idea and, co and potential concepts and actually the interest in studying what is the true problem that we are facing. One of the good examples of uh, success, a few but good examples of success in translational research is tumor immunology, interesting enough, which is, uh, is Another interest, if not maybe the primary interest of mine, which is the mechanism of tumor rejection, how we can use that to treat cancer. And in some ways, uh, this is a field that has started quite a lot in a translational sense. A lot of people that have been interested in this field historically are people that are started from the clinics and been trying to apply immunological concepts to see how you can, uh, can uh, treat uh, cancer. And I have to say that in the last 10 years, there's been, there's been a lot of advancement, in fact. And, and new therapeutics have been approved and licensed by the FDA. There is obvious evidence, at least in principle, that new treatment includes, includes survival, sometimes based on very simple manipulation of the immune system. So there are examples of success in, uh, in uh, uh, using translational approaches, but unfortunately, I wish there were more. I found it very difficult to, specifically regarding publication, the, to, uh, to have a venue for uh, manuscripts that were trying to tackle uh, uh, important and relevant topics, but not necessarily in the most elegant form, because they're related to the uh, chaotic environment of uh, uh, the clinical experimentation, into journals that were uh, uh, broad and they were uh, broadly read, and so I thought that uh, it would be very important to facilitate the concept uh, in, of translational research by starting from the publication process where you could publish with through open access in, a in journals that uh, have broad uh, implications like journal translational medicine but facilitate this process because the peer review system is based on people that these kind of uh, goals which are people that are trained both in clinical research as well as basic science that do understand the value of this kind of if you want compromise, but highly relevant research. So the result has been that I'm very happy with the uh, outcomes and positive results of uh, the journal and as well other journals so since then have been developed with the same spirit. I'm still being fascinated by how difficult still the process remains of translational medicine. Everybody agrees that uh, it's important to do clinical re relevant research, but still is very limited by the, um, the difficulty in coordinating uh, research and allowing. I think the aim is to congregate different kinds of discipline and uh, skills into understanding a, a clinical relevant problem by everybody working together. Although in theory is a great idea, I think the major disappointment last ten years is that in fact very, f very few people do it. The way finding is going now is actually separating even more basic sciences from clinical sciences simply because clinicians are pushed uh, more and more to be uh, revenue generating rather than spending time doing research and at the same time because of a limited funding scientists are going becoming more and more conservative in dealing with their own elegant and uh, 
pr predictive, if you want, um, models rather than trying to compromise their research by doing something in combination with the clinics, which is obviously much more difficult and much more complex, expensive, and long term. So in some ways, that's been the disappointment. And I think we're still pretty much where we're 10 years ago in this respect, if not worse. chose to move to Qatar uh, uh, because it's a country which is truly dominated, uh, governed by a dream. Basically, the, the leadership there is really interested in creating a knowledge-based economy and with that, in that including also the uh, um, research, not only at biomedical as well as engineering and so forth. And they put 3% of their GDP in research. So while the rest of the world is cutting the funding of research, there are a few countries they are increasing it and putting a lot of effort in not only they put the, the resources, but they put their in direct interest. And so I was somewhat fascinated. I want to be part of this dream, and I had the opportunity to run, to develop completely ex novo a research enterprise in a clinical center, which is affiliated, first academic center in Qatar, which is affiliated with uh, White Cornell, which is uh, also in Qatar. Uh, the center is called Sidra American Research Center, it's going to be children and women and it's going to be devoted specifically to uh, look at uh, issue, of course, women and children relevant to Qatar. And uh, because it's been developed ex novo, I really hope to create an integrated research system where every single scientist in, uh, or clinician in that center will be focusing in, in, uh, on specific questions working uh, uh, as a team. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's like herding cats, but uh, I, I hope that I, I'm going to have a mandate to do that and maybe uh, achieve the dream or do integrated research and use clinically relevant research. Because the society is not just a scientific society, but it also is involved with uh, development or regulation, recommendations, and uh, other aspects that are independent of the, uh, the science, it's very important to have an official journal that can represent the society. And so I've been pushing actually for a year to start that. And obviously, I've also been pushing there should be an open access journal because there's very, a lot of uh, implications for lay people, people that can uh, uh, um, look at recommendations. And uh, originally, we had a, a section in Journal Translation on Medicine, which was very, very successful. And we had articles that were you know, accessed by 10, of t tens of thousands of times. And so I think that would be the goal of having a journal that is dedicated and be the official um, representative, uh, the official voice of the society, uh, which is the biggest society for tumor immunology in the world. At the same time, of course, the idea is to also uh, promote good science and uh, good clinical investigation and some way we have very high standards for that.